fix a windowsill that my dog has chewed. For this, we're going to use Quick Wood by JB Weld, some 120 grit sandpaper, some water and isopropyl alcohol, and then also a razor blade. All right, to start off, we're going to remove a lot of the excess here just with some sandpaper real quick. Sandbag some of the paint as well, which I just did today, but that's the point. Once we have all that sanded back, we then take our razor blade. We're actually going to make a couple of just deep cuts on the top here. And that's to actually key in our putty here. So just go diagonal one way and back the other way. This gives the putty something to attach to. Next up, we're going to mix up our putty. All right, so this putty is a two-part epoxy. So we take this little, little cover off. You can see the white inside and then the brown. What this is is the, the actual epoxy and then the hardener. I'm going to use about half this stick. It's probably too much, but that's okay. There's a protective coating on here, so go ahead and remove that. Once we find which way it goes. Right here, so. And then we have to knead it together. Now this stuff smells really bad, so we're off to a good start. You should wear gloves, but I've noticed it tends to stick to gloves. So just go ahead and knead it. Back and forth. All especially together. You want to knead it until it's an even and consistent color. Set that to the side for a moment. Grab our water and isopropyl alcohol. Spray. Wipe off. Let's just make sure that, that there's nothing on it. <clears throat> no dust or anything. All right, so now that we have our clay to uniform mass and it's been cleaned off, just go ahead and take it, press it in. Just gonna do a very loose general fit at the moment. it in. And you notice it sticks my finger. Nice little tip for that. A little bit of water. No longer sticks to you. So I like to keep a little bit of water near me. Go ahead, press it into where that needs to go. So down here. And right now we're just making a very rough shape because we're going to have to come back and sand it down and probably add some more once we're done. All right, so now that we have the general shape outlined, kind of take a look underneath. So we know it's supposed to have this little ridge here. So we're going to go ahead and bring this up. Just use your finger, press up to create that ridge. Now, you two down all the way to here, so I have to press this in some more. Could 
also use something like a putty knife to help you get a flatter line. But I'm not too concerned initially with the first, first round. As I said, this is just a very general shaping. wet and then just continue to mold and shape it until it's approximately the shape that you want. Okay, so what's obvious, this is not my first time having to do this for a windowsill that a dog is chewed. This right here is starting to sag a little bit, that's okay. Just keep working with it some. Now because we've made those cuts in here with the razor blade and keyed it in, it's actually creating a nice bond with the wood. Just keep pressing it in. What you want to do is you want to press down and actually push out to try and get it as flush as possible so that way there's not too big of a lip. Unfortunately, the water does not affect this in any way, so you're not going to affect its ability to cure a bond. And it takes about five to 10 minutes to fully harden for us. So after this, we're going to wait some time, come back and sand it. See right here where it's delaminating a little bit because I don't have any cuts in the wood. That's fine. So I'll be sanding all that back in. All right, so we have a very approximate shape of what we want. I'm just trying to round out the edges here a little bit. Because we had to use so much, it is sagging, but we'll just have to come back and add a little bit more putty afterward, that's all. So we're going to leave it there, come back in a bit. Now that our epoxy is hardened, we're going to move on to sanding it. You can do this by hand, it just takes quite a while longer as this stuff definitely hardens to the same hardness as wood, if not even harder. So instead of doing it by hand, I am using a Dremel oscillating tool, which just vibrates back and forth quickly to remove the majority of the excess epoxy. Whenever you're working with this stuff, or really any type of sanding in general, you should always wear protective equipment such as glasses and a respirator or a dust mask. This stuff definitely irritates your eyes when you get the dust in them. Trust me, I, I never have personal experience. The first pass for sanding just does a very general shaping for us and lets us see the low spots and any place where we need to continue to shape the epoxy next time. I also want to apologize in advance for the audio change that's about to happen. I plugged the lavalier mic into the wrong slot on the camera, so the camera was picking up using its default mic, and I changed it after the sanding bit here, so the audio should be notably clearer and louder moving forward. Alright, so now that we've got that leveled down, we have a couple of low spots, and underneath, I'm not going to move the camera, but it's not quite uh, squared for us, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to key the epoxy here, so make a couple of long strikes, diagonally, that's why it bonds well. Right here, we're, we need a little bit more right through here, so add a couple of scratches, and then underneath. All right, now we're just gonna mix up some epoxy. We're gonna put that on there. All right, so for this one, we're just going to use a belt maybe a quarter of what we have.
Go ahead and remove the plastic film and then begin kneading it. And it takes, you know, 15-20 minutes for it to set up. So you can knock this out in one day if you want. It's not too hard to do. And the worst part is I just actually finished doing this earlier today and then Izzy undecided it was time to chew it again. So we're going to have to find a way to stop it from chewing. I've tried vinegar, I've tried bitterant sprays, I've tried apple cider vinegar. He uh, doesn't seem to care. All right, so just take one chunk initially, put it on here. With the finger. I want to bring this corner out a little bit more because it's not quite as, as sharp as it's supposed to be. Okay, that's good there. Grab a little bit here. Try to fill in these low spots I have. A little bit right through here. I actually lost a little bit while I was sanding. Not because of anything that I did particularly, but the, uh, the fresh paint that's on here gave way and it, it peeled off underneath, so. It happens sometimes. All right, so now that we've got the top done, and when we get done, this should actually be pretty much perfect for it. Oh. Because this is actually proud enough, so we're good there. Get this pressed in. Make sure it's really nice and attached. And we're good there, okay. All right, now underneath. Don't need too much. So for the most part, I'm just going to press this in and not worry too much about actually shaping it. I'll shape it when I sand it with the Dremel a little bit. Wet the finger. All right. But I can at least make the bottom flat like it's supposed to be. Right. Looks like I need a little bit more right through here. I'm just gonna take it. I need to key that a little bit more. this right here, press it in, make sure the bottom is nice and flat, that way I don't make more work for myself. Alright, All right, so we have quite a bit that we have to take off here, but that's okay. through here, so pull the putty after I wet the finger. There we go. You just keep working until you have approximately the shape you want.
like we are now good. Gonna use my razor blade just as a small flat edge. Get the blade in water so that way it doesn't stick. And this will just make it a little bit easier when we go to sand it. Get a nice clean corner. And it looks like when I'm done, I might need to add a little bit down here. And that's okay. Actually, I've got some I can drag out. And the more work you put into cleaning up and shaping your edge, the less sanding you're going to have to do. And sanding is really the worst part. If you take too much off, then, well, you have to go back and add more putty. Okay, so we're good there. And then we're just gonna make sure all this is still good. Yeah, we're good there. So we're gonna leave that there, come back in you know, half an hour, sand it down again, make sure it's nice and smooth across the top, make sure down here is smooth, and then you should be ready for paint if everything looks good. And now that we've got it completely sanded, what we do is we go ahead and take our 220 grit sandpaper just to give it a nice smooth finish. The 220 doesn't really take anything more off, so we're good there. It just smooths out the finish. But be careful around the, the sharper corners like down here, because it will round them off. We're just going to feather out a little bit as well because we will have to repaint. We want to make sure that our paint adheres when we go to do that. So. And then use your hand to feel. Everything feels smooth between the transition. That means you know you've got it good. So after this, uh, all we have to do is clean it off and then we are ready to paint. And then once we're happy with the results, which for this I am, everything is nice and smooth, go ahead and grab our isopropyl alcohol. Give it a nice spray. This way we get all the dust and all the oils off. Have a rag. All right, then we're gonna give this about two minutes to dry. That way we can make sure it's not wet at all because the paint does not like to stick to uh, isopropyl alcohol. And next up, we're going to mask off, probably from about here over to the wall, down, we're just going to repaint this section right here. All right, so it's been enough time, so we're going to go ahead and mask off the section that we're going to be painting. 
I always like to use two inch tape. This way I don't have to be super accurate with the paintbrush. Here, so I'm not gonna put a large piece of tape. And I'm gonna flip a little corner down here. Just make sure you cut your right angle. So make sure that your tape can fit in there nicely. On one side. And use the other end of that that was cut. To go in right here. off. Next up is paint. All right, so I'm using uh, some acrylic paint here. I'm just using a cheap two inch nylon brush. Get the head of the, the brush just nice and wet. And start off nice thick coat right here. Great thing about the acrylic paint is it's rather self leveling. So if you do put a, a thicker coat on, it tends to level out and not leave brush marks as readily. Meaning you don't have to have as good paint skills to be able to get a good finish. Because my painting skills with a brush are terrible. They always have been. All right, now that we've got a good coat, and this is a, uh, a single coat type of paint, meaning you only need one coat to get a good finish and cover everything, and that does seem to stand true. And then right before we tear off the tape, we wanna make sure to put a nice heavy bead around here of paint. The reason for that is if the paint dries on the tape, it will pull up the tape with it. And so we always do that section last. Make sure I have everything good down here first, which I do. And I should also mention I'm using the same color paint that is already on this, so I can go over it and not have to blend anything in. All right, so we've got a decent amount of paint right there. Add a little bit more to our brush and just really get into this corner real quick. Okay, and the corner, right over here. And that's why I use two inch tape because I definitely just painted a whole section of tape right there. And I'm painting left-handed, which is not my specialty. All right, you always wanna try and brush in one direction you start going back and forth, it's going to pick up and leave some paint around, or leave some of the paint off of it, or take some paint away. So always try to do one direction. I'm just feathering in at the end here. Make sure everything is covered, which from what I can see it is. Make sure you don't have any drips. No excess paint anywhere. And the great thing about this acrylic paint is it dries in like five minutes. And as soon as you're done painting, go ahead and pull up your tape. Because you don't want your tape to bond to the paint. And keep in mind that you do have wet paint on this. So if you touch it to yourself, you're gonna have paint on you. But that is it. We've repaired the window sole that is on chewed. It looks good as new. And we're done with repairing this windowsill. It's not 100% perfect as you may be able to see, but it's definitely better than what it was. 
One thing to note, you may not notice some imperfections until after you've painted because the paint tends to bring out the imperfections and make them more visible. If this happens, wait a day for the paint to fully dry and cure, and then go back to sanding. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and were able to learn a little bit from it. As always, if you like the content I'm putting out, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with new content as it comes out. Thanks for watching. Take care.